Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, back-to-back -back road wins for the Red Raiders, and Grant McCaslin indicates if you ain't defending, you ain't playing. Who is he talking about? You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raiders! Everything runs through love. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, fresh back from Stillwater, Oklahoma, as the Red Raiders drop the Cowboys wire to wire taking care of business and uh chris typically when we're accustomed to seeing a margin like what we saw at halftime uh we're also somewhat accustomed to seeing a furious finish from the good guys and dramatics and a win for texas tech we did see the win but it was the inverse of that it was all texas tech all the time and i gotta tell you somewhat relaxing to take in a basketball game like that i have enjoyed the cardiac mac experience it's been a lot of fun as a fan <laughs> Uh, but there was something fun about that one as well as the Red Raiders put it on the Cowboys and never really let off. Yeah, this uh, this wasn't uh, I think it was like 2019 or 2020. You won up there 85 to 50 and it was ugly. You just you just rolled and this wasn't quite that. But boy, it was close. Uh, I think you were up 50 to 26 at one point. You were up. You know, obviously 38-17 at the half. And I kept, you know, I kept thinking to myself, I, I'd seen this movie a lot of times. Not that you got you had gotten way up uh, in this building and then lost, but I'd just seen the end result not go your way many, many times in this uh, building. It's just been a tough place for you to, to play. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I just thought you were – and it got a little bit sloppy at times. Uh, it, it did. I think we're, you had some unforced errors. But overall, you just – I loved your juice. Uh, I, it was the BYOE, man, like we talked yeah. about. You, you kind of you, – you were the most excited team to play, uh, and and I think it showed. They were just trying to, in some ways, get through it. Luckily, their shots weren't going in, uh, and then, it, you know, I think that was a bit contagious. They started to make some late, but it, it was Pop and Darian leading the way again. And, you know, I think Joe and, and, uh, and Chance also kind of – sprinkled in uh, some goodies as well and it's just like I, I love the uh, I just love the, the total effort because it, you never let them feel like they had a chance and you know, they cut it to late in the game or semi late in the game they cut it to like 14 and there was still 10 minutes left or so and you're thinking okay man they hit a they hit a three here or get a run out and this what 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 small crowd is here is gonna you know start to buzz a bit but it just that that never that was as close as they would ultimately get, and I don't know. I was, uh, and you know, you know what ultimately this win does, yeah, because it does a lot of things. But the, the my main takeaway, and this has nothing to do with the selection committee, nothing to do with really anything other than to point this out about the way this team was coached. They're going to end the season. They're they're going to end the season with no bad losses. You know, there's really not a night where they just didn't show up or got beat by a head scratcher like, uh, what's going on there? Yeah, you can look at maybe Villanova or the Butler games in the in the preseason and go, man, looking back, probably should have. Well, they, they were not bad losses at the time at all. And and now you, you survive this back to back, you know, road trip where these would have been perceived as bad losses on paper and otherwise, yeah. and you're going to finish this whole season. And I think that's a credit, uh, you know, one more thing that I think Grant and his staff can be really, really proud of because they showed up every night. Yeah, I was really trying to think uh, last night after the game about sort of the ebb and flow of what you've gone through in the Big 12 Conference. And uh, it did stand out to me that uh, the worst experience, I guess, uh, aside from some of the emotion that was tied in as far as the Texas game goes, uh, was a drubbing at the hands of the number one team in the nation. And it's not that that's going to go down smooth or anything like that, but it is the number one yeah. team in the nation on the road. But you're right. There hadn't been one of those days where you're wondering why the team didn't get off the bus or something like that. Again, 
I understand how frustrating and disappointing the loss against Texas was, so maybe that's up for debate. But there's been plenty of times where you had a good basketball team, and there have also been seasons that have included uh, still with a decent basketball team some of those days that you are you know, sort of scratching your head. So I guess what does that just speak to the fact that Grant McCaslin, 9.9 times out of 10, he and his staff are able – uh, to get their guys to play up to the level of their potential or to uh, squeeze every drop out of what there is. I don't know, but maybe something along those lines. Yeah, and I, and I guess the closest thing you could say to a bad loss, maybe that I would say, yeah, the Texas game was rough, but maybe the home game against Cincinnati, you know, again, yeah. one of those look at looking back on it, because at the time I was like, oh, man, this is uh, – and, and Cincinnati had a few injuries, uh, you know, they, they did at the time and they still are dealing with some of that, but you know, j- just as a throwaway, but, but I think it's a, uh, I think, I think you got a, an alpha as a head coach, man. I think he's a, a unbelievable manager of people and personalities. And if you're watching him uh, in this game last night, you know, on TV or, or whatever it may be, it's like, he's as passionate up 24, 26 points as, he is when you're, you know, a tie game or down 10 or whatever it may be. I mean, he is not given an inch, and he was coaching his coaches. He's coaching his bench. Like he got he got really frustrated with his bench last night for not having enough energy. Uh, you know, after, you know, there was one of those answers late in the game when, you know, it was, it was very much, you know, in doubt for Oklahoma State. But they they could have hit another shot, and then you kind of come that down and answer it. He just went down to the bench, and he was like, "I need more from you, 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 you. I need some excitement. Like we, we just made a good play. Like this is this is March, and uh, you know, I just it, it's been fun kind of watching him do his thing. But I think it's just a yeah, it's a he deserves a lot of credit. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm talking being long winded about that simple statement. It's so exciting that I appreciate all the wind because it's been a long time since you felt like you were in such great hands as far as a coach is concerned. And I mean, we're sitting here talking about regular season achievement and it's not going to include any big 12 hardware or anything like that. So I I don't want to go bananas and it's just, uh, just the first year, but I think so often, you know, even going back to the most recent successful era uh, of Chris Beards, you kind of felt like, all right, uh, this is fun, but also there seems to be a ticking time bomb component, <laughs> you know, that's kind of yeah. mixed in here. So you're juggling those two things. I don't get that sense with Grant McCaslin, of course, but again, still very early on. So time will tell uh, what his tenure at Texas Tech is going to hold. As far as some of the individual efforts are concerned, Chris, you mentioned uh, Darion Williams, who's just just unbelievable. And I, I don't know. I don't know of a player that I really felt like has had a more consistent rise throughout the season, Um, you know, coming into the year thinking, all right, can he be a great piece? Can he be someone that, you know, every fourth or fifth game maybe is a guy that kind of leads the charge. Uh, But I I think he's definitely working his way into, you know, all conference kind of categories. I don't know what, what team he might wind up on as far as those lists are concerned. And it is the toughest conference in the nation. So the competition will be stout from other individual perspectives Um, But I'm not so sure, man, that down the stretch, given some of the hit or miss uh, showings from from Pop Isaacs here down the stretch, I I, I don't know that Williams is far away from being your team MVP. I mean, when you wrap up the regular season, does that sound crazy? Because it it would sound crazy to me if I told you that two months ago (laughs) that he was even going to be near that category. But I think he's there. First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time, and you shouldn't have to sweat it out when buying tickets to your favorite events. And with Game Time, you never will because it's always a breeze using the Game Time app where you're going to find killer last minute deals, views from every seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, which means Game Time is the place to find last minute seats to any event. Game Time, also the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets, but not just fast. Also secure and simple to use. So right now, download the Game Time app and create an account and use our promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Again, download the Game Time app today and use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed with Game Time. He's a joy to watch play because there is no drama, and that's why. Uh, I it bothered me more than it maybe normally would have when the whole Brock Cunningham thing because who it was against. Yeah. 
because Darian is just – he's a great teammate. Uh, he, he just – he's unselfish. Uh, every Everything that he's done here, none of it's forced. He just – you know, more often than not, makes the right play. Uh, he fills up a stat sheet. I mean, like last night. Okay, so he's got the third most assists on the team. And, and, and last night, he only has one. Okay, he's got 18 points, nine rebounds, and just the one assist. However, however, he also has five steals, okay, to, to, to mix in. Like, okay, yeah, not, tonight's not going to be the night where I'm going to I'm going to dish it. I'm just going to take it away from the other team, you know, like that that you know, and it's so. But that's that's just what he's done all year. It's, um, you know, and I think because he came into you know this this season having averaged, you know, like a a fairly modest you know seven and seven you know eight and seven type uh, situation with the Wolfpack last year uh, in the Mountain West and freshman of the year and all those things. And, um, you know, in conference play, I should say. Anyway, so it, it just it, – it, he's flourished. He's grown. He's matured. He's a better player. He's a very more uh, – a much more impactful player. And I and I would say, yeah, he's been your, your steadiest guy and maybe your most – you know, the MIP, MVP, however you want to phrase it. Uh, but I, I think you, you kind of touched on it. If he's not, you know, like a first or second team, you know, all Big 12 performer, it's going to bother me a great deal because you're now in a situation where you, you're going to be, you know, fourth or fifth at worst in this league. So the wins have been there and he's been the steady guy all throughout uh, that, you know, and, and Pop has too to a certain extent, but I think D5 has been a bit different. Yeah, Pop's been so uh, it, just strange to kind of, processes we've gone along because there have been some of those days where I'm sure he's wanting to pull his hair out from a shooting perspective and then you look <laughs> up and he's got 19 points to lead the team he, yeah. he's gotten to the free throw line eight or nine times or and, and that's not even we're, that's just talking scoring obviously not even trying to quantify everything he's doing otherwise but uh, I, I don't want to diminish what he's done it's just come in kind of a bizarre fashion in some ways but he was one guy that uh, certainly at any point early on in the game if you're seeing pop knock down a shot it's kind of a relief at this point in time and what he scored the first five I think maybe seven yeah well he, he ended up fairly early he had uh 12 points he was like five of six from the field I mean he was feeling it I mean he it was like gonna be one of those nights and what did he he ended up with yeah 19 on 7 of 11 shooting uh three from three at the free throw line and two of five from behind the arc so yeah uh, it, it was just I, I just and and he got he got pushed and shoved and hit uh several times he kind of came up, um, you know, like, oh, like I'm seeing Winston. Th these these potential, like, days of rest, uh, like the double buy that you may be playing for on Saturday, it is it's not just about Warren and, you know, trying to but, – but your whole your whole crew needs just some extra days of rest. Uh, th this league – because I've asked people that are now in it for the first time, like, okay, you, you've you watched the Big 12 from afar. Now that you've been through it, you've coached in it. I think I've asked a couple of the Texas Tech assistant coaches in this in some of the pregame interviews and stuff like, but what's your impression of this league? And they all use the same word. It's much more physical than I would have thought. And it's like sometimes it's hard to see some of the talent because – you're just allowed to be so physical. And for a guy like Pop, who's fairly slight, doesn't weigh a ton, I mean, he gets pushed and beat on, and, and it's rough. And his body kind of – he needs these hours and days of, of extra rest if you can get it. So, um, But, yeah, he, he was he was very sharp early. And when he hit that first three, I thought, okay, here we go. We came to play, and sure enough. Yeah, it's glad to see that for him, and uh, hopefully that will pick up as we – get into uh, some postseason settings as well. And, man, Mr. Consistency, I guess, at this point in time. We talked about him a couple of days ago being in a six-man-of-the-year kind of category. But uh, Chance McMillan, I mean, another newcomer that turns out to be a hit for Grant McCaslin. I don't know which newcomer has not been a hit for him. They've all been highly impactful. But, uh, you know, I, I guess – for some reason, I just have this perception where, like, if Joe Toussaint is impactful, I'm like, yeah, I, I thought he would be impactful. And maybe I was just expecting too little out of somebody like Darion Williams or Chance McMillan, but 
uh, with them doing what they've done, it just it really blows me away, particularly with McMillan, because, you know, I think early on he had the the night there in Indiana against the Butler Bulldogs and made you think, all right, well, definitely don't leave him open on the three point line because he can do that. But uh, this guy seems to enjoy playing above the rim at times. Also, he's always battling and, and working his tail off as far as rebounding is concerned. He's definitely turned into and he maybe hasn't turned into. He probably was already this. I just didn't know it, but uh, is a well-rounded player. And that's not to mention uh, the white hot nature as far as the shooting streaks that he can go on. Yeah, and th- this this one's not going to go down as far as his best games of the year or anything, or like even when we think back on it, you know, like memorable or anything like that. But I mean, because, you know, it wasn't like Norman or Butler uh, where he had, he was just what, got in the mid 20s on both of those because he had like five or six threes. Uh, but, um, you know, he, he did, he did have an impact, uh, in West Virginia. And then last night he doesn't score in the first half and you're like, Oh no. And then he comes out of the locker room and scores 14 in the second half. Uh, and, and I, again, I'll keep saying this. He's one of these guys that if, if, if he plays really well and scores it, it's like your margin for error just gets, gets bigger and bigger. The gap is wider, uh, which means you're that more. Uh, that much more scary of an opponent. Um, but whenever he doesn't score, it's like, oh, they need a lot of things to go right if he's not coming along. Because you know who's kind of disappeared a bit lately is Kerwin Walton. You know, yeah. he's just kind of been MIA a little bit. And you're getting everything you can from like an EY and a Robert Jennings uh, in Warren Washington's absence. But yeah, when Chance scores it for you, it takes the pressure off of guys like Pop and D5 and, and even Joe or whatever. I mean, so to have some of that juice coming off the bench. But, yeah, you're I, I like the dunk along the baseline. Yeah. You know, that, that those are as fun for me as like the the threes coming off of a, a stagger screen or whatever it may be. But, uh, yeah, just the fact that he scores and can get into double figures, it, it just really makes you that much more scary as, a, as an opponent. What do you think? Uh, what do you think allows him to be so competitive from a rebounding standpoint? Because he's not—he's not a big guy necessarily. Is he—is he just smart in the way he positions his body? Is he just hustling all the time? Or what, what do you think? Because that's part of the game that I'm like, okay, I didn't anticipate him checking that box so often. Yeah, you know, and he—it's he, not like he's rebounding like crazy numbers, but he does mix in some. He's a better rebounder than Kerwin, that's for sure. Kerwin, that's one of his really weaknesses. For as big as he is, is that he just doesn't. But chances has he has a knack for it. Uh, I think that it is effort. Um, I think though that he he uses his athleticism, um, you know, to you know uh, get up in the air at times. I mean, he can win some of those those tap those back tap games when the ball's just up in yeah. the air. And okay, now it's science, folks. Uh, well, he's got a, a <laughs> vertical uh, that that'll compete and all those things. But yeah, it's it's just little things with this team, though. You know, it's like some of those nights when. You know, Warren or Darian were like leading the team in assists. And then you got a guy like, you know, a chance that's like one of your best rebounders on some night, you know, kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's like it, but you know, however we can get it done and it may be outside the box a bit, but you know, and, and again, it's just a, uh, uh, the other thing too that should be mentioned is all these guys are such high character guys. You know, they did a really good job of gleaning good people out of this portal and like guys that aren't selfish and that want to win can take coaching can take hard coaching absolutely um and none of them are perfect but i mean overall i think that's a very fair statement to make is that they they really did a good job of you know recruiting character and you always try to but sometimes you may look the other way like okay i know he's got these issues but (laughs) god he's really good or he's really big and so we'll 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 fix it right well they they just did a really good job here of you know because i mean chance mcmillan and darian williams and joe i mean you're gonna hear people when joe toussaint ultimately leaves here okay after this season whenever it, it does end you're gonna hear people talk about him internally the way the way he treated people like they did about Jarrett culver and zaire smith which is about as high a praise as i can give a a player you know, uh, just how he treats just the people he's in, in contact with daily. And that that should tell you a lot. I guess I'm going to assume until we're told otherwise that uh, Warren Washington's season is not over. Uh, but, man, it sure has been quiet on that front. I know big men and foot injuries 
are very, very difficult and kind of unique unto themselves as far as trying to be on the mend. Are, are we heading into each game uh, considering the possibility of him playing? Is it not a consideration at this point? I, I hate to even well, ask a stupid question, but where are we? No, it's, it's not dumb. And I, and I, I, I know everybody wants to know it and I, I just don't know if they can like offer up too much because it's, it, it, it is um, a painful, you know, injury, I think. Uh, but it, it, it's, yeah, you're just game to game at this point. And I think that, you know, obviously he didn't come to uh, uh, to Stillwater with the team or anything. And so, you know, it just, it really, it points to Saturday or it points to like Kansas City next week. You know, I mean, they they, they know their, their opportunities are, are running out. Um, you know, you'd like to get him going a bit before you get into one of these, settings just to get him uh a feel for things and, and, and all that but it's not my foot it's not my injury and, <laughs> right. and i you know um so only you know only he and and grant mccaslin and mike neal can kind of sort through that but i mean I, I his season's not over i don't think anybody is is going to suggest that at all because that wouldn't be true uh but does that mean he's for sure playing saturday or next uh wednesday or thursday i, I couldn't tell you that uh but um, and, and again, you, you've got a, a young man, uh, anyway, that's kind of, you know, he continues to show some flashes and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's just fun. Uh, cause I mean, he, he's stepping out on some of those pick and pops and shooting some of those threes and he can make those folks. I mean, and that's why he's got some upside. He can make those. He did. They didn't go down last night, but I've seen him, uh, make plenty of them. He did a couple late in the game at central Florida. Uh, but no, that's, that's a makeable shopper. He's got a great soft touch and, you know, he's only going to get better. But, uh, again, some of the small positives out of the Warren Washington injury is him being, uh, able to, to flourish and kind of, you know, play, play some productive minutes in games that are very, very meaningful. Aside from the uh, complimentary portion of the program for all the Red Raiders that we discussed, there was also something interesting post game from Red Raider head coach, Grant McCaslin. First, today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. And eBay Motors has you covered with everything you need to maintain your vehicle and keep that ride or die ride on the road. Or if you're just looking to elevate your car's game to the next level of performance, they got what you're looking for. With roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, superchargers, and accessories of all kinds to fit your style, whether you're looking for speed, power, or design, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts to perfectly fit what you need. So just head over today to ebay.com slash motors, where you're going to always find exactly what you're looking for. And with no risk because of eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit just right every time or your money back, keeping you burning rubber and not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to keep your ride or die ride on the road and moving your life forward at ebay.com slash Motors, eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. Also something interesting post game from Red Raider head coach Grant McCaslin. And this was regarding a question about a guy that so many ask about so I often and uh, Kyron Lindsay. And here is what regarding his status Grant McCaslin had to say. When you look in this league, the top two teams in our league the teams that are 1-2 in the standings, that are in the top eight in the country, that are um, winning our league, have the two best defenses in the country. And so there's been an emphasis that what we're going to do defensively, everybody has to be all in on it. And so, and so we're, we're, we're measuring who wants to guard and who wants to be about defense this time of year. And if you want to, you're going to be playing and be a part of the team. And if you're not, then it's, it's not going to work. Clear enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would say that um, wall writing, it's on it. Um, you know, um, whoo. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, I, I think you get these uh, these these releases. Uh, you did Saturday and you did last night. <clears throat> and it's because all other injured players were in Morgantown. Now, last night, obviously, Warren stayed back, I think, to rehab. 
And so that wasn't necessarily true, but it's like, it just, it just was like Kyron Lindsay didn't make the trip, you know? Um, and now you've got these, these very witty folks on red Raider sports.com, uh, Byron Lindsay, uh, uh, Kai gone, Lindsay. Um, you know, yeah, everybody's... the Byron's be Kai guns. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all, all these things. I I don't know what ultimately will happen here, but that's that's. I mean, y- you know, and maybe you can uh, do an about face, and he's you know, it's like I mean, you know, Kyron took hard coaching, and and he he's he's all in now. You know, it, it's like we had to shake him up a little bit, but. Folks, the portal opens in like twelve days, maybe, uh, and and a lot of these things are going to start happening rather quickly. And for you not to be on a couple of very meaningful road trips, and then for the the head coach to indicate that you're you're not really bought in, because we we know is is good of an offense and efficient offense as you've had this year. We know what this head coach's backbone is. We know what what his principles are. We know what he's about. There's a body of work uh, at different levels of basketball that are that are telling you point blank what he's about. Mm. And and if you're not about that, I just don't know if this is the best fit for you. Again, don't know how this ends, but I, I think uh, I think that's pretty clear. Uh, at least where it stands right now, so I think people will will can can stop wondering um, kind of what what is out there. It doesn't make uh, you know Grant a bad person or Kyron a bad person if they just don't see eye to eye and there's a different way of doing things. And you don't you know it doesn't mean that you you have to you don't have to buy into this deal. You can go play somewhere else if that's what you want to do. But uh, but yeah, it doesn't. I wouldn't guess that we see him again. Guess uh, see him anymore the rest of this year. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty yeah. much, I don't know what, what was you, when you heard this, what was your, what was your take? Exactly that he's done. Yeah. I mean, or at least okay. it's all, it's all on him, I guess, if he's not going to be done, but I just, I, I'm so far away from this. Like the guy that's on the end of the bench falling off the end of the bench is just yeah. so uninteresting to me. And I've been, it's boggled my mind as to why so many people just constantly ask about Kyron Lindsay. And I'm like, how many damn burners does Kyron Lindsay have? In the YouTube comments, is he the one asking, or is <laughs> Mama, Papa, Aunt, Uncle, Brother, Sister, whatever? It's just un. Unend- I don't know. I mean, and I we I talk about all the other guys that don't like. Where's Jack Francis? How come Jack Francis is not? <laughs> you know, and, so and I, I just- think I think with Kyron it comes down to because you lack size, you and he's got some, yeah. and so it's like, and he transferred from a power four school you know, uh, in Georgia and he's, you know, and so, and he was a, and and again, part of this too, this is the problem with recruiting rankings. Sometimes there's this, there's this narrative that is attached to a player and it's like, holy cow, you know? And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, what's, what's wrong? Like something's amiss. Like, why is he not playing? There's gotta be something else. Well, you know, I mean, I guess Grant's telling you what, what the, uh, what the something else is (laughs) right now. You're having a productive season, and I'm just – it's a very little concern to me uh, yeah. regarding a guy that has not been a part of that productive season. So I don't that, – that's just where I'm at. And, uh, again, maybe it'll be on Lindsay if he, he wants to get back in the mix. If he doesn't, then they'll just keep doing what they've done all year, I suppose, doing it mostly or 99.9% uh, without his contribution. And the world will continue to turn. He can go be an archaeologist or a school <laughs> teacher or whatever he wants to be, I guess, just like – uh, the rest of us, but man, looking ahead and looking forward to uh, this weekend back at United Supermarket Serena should be a really fun day as the Red Raiders host the Baylor Bears. Big opportunity to get obviously a meaningful win, but also a big opportunity to uh, celebrate the team and some of these guys and what they've meant to you. So uh, as we get closer to that, obviously we'll get you primed up for uh, Texas Tech and Baylor, but appreciate the time as always, Chris. Always fun to talk about a win and now back to back away from home for the good guys. Yeah, you know, and uh, it'll be senior day, and uh, obviously, you know, on on Saturday, and, and I think uh, that that's to be a big day for Joe, and then uh, somebody like Warren and all that. But yeah, this is uh, we'll kind of talk more about what it all meant as we go along this week. But uh, yeah, appreciate the, the time. It was a fun night in Stillwater. Several Red Raider fans were there, but uh, keep hope alive, 
meaningful basketball is is I mean really meaningful basketball is uh is getting close because you just you just sharpied your way into the tournament for sure now there's no take backs now so uh <laughs> yeah but uh yeah th- th- this was a fun one to talk about because winning on the road in this league is just not easy but uh keep hope alive we'll talk to everybody tomorrow thanks for being out there and I uh, hope you'll get subscribed if you're not already so you never miss an episode on YouTube or anywhere You get podcasts for Chris. I'm Casey, and we also hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.